2A in Philadelphia. What you see on the screen is a wedding picture of B.D. Hyman and her husband, Jeremy yes. Hyman. And uh, we're talking about the life of Betty Davis as it relates to her daughter, who has written a book about that called My Mother's Keeper, which is just about as controversial as a, as a memoir of a parent can be. Uh, let's start at the beginning. We saw at the very beginning a picture of you and your dad, who was yes. William Sherry, and your mother. Yes. He left almost immediately, ran off with your nurse. Well, that's what Mother always told me, yes. That's the one thing in the book that's not accurate, because I have since begun to know my father since he's read the book. And he has written to me and told me he's very proud of me for writing the book, and that he did not run away. That Mother threw him out of the house because she saw Gary in a movie and thought he was much neater than he was, and tossed Dad out and moved Gary in long before the divorce. So even that was one of Mother's fantasies. So you grew up thinking that your father was a jerk? No, I didn't. Well, I didn't she wouldn't allow my his, mother. She wouldn't allow his That's name what spoken in the house. That's what mother wanted me to believe. Yes, it is. But I, I never accepted that. I just assumed that he had, he had got himself out of a rotten situation, which marriage to my mother could be nothing else but then, and uh, kind of lumped me with her and put it behind him and went on with his life. He's been married to Marion now for 34 years very happily. They have two kids who just adore him. And uh, I just assumed that that's the way he felt about it. It wasn't the way he felt about it. Mother, mother did indeed drive him out, and mother is something to be contended with. And he actually felt, he's told me recently, that uh, mother's attitude about my affection towards my father was so hideous and caused me such hysteria that he felt he was damaging me by insisting that he stay in my life. And he said if he really loved me, he felt he had to let me go, and that's what he did. So he never communicated with you? No, no, he didn't. Uh, we sent Christmas cards and things after I got married, but I always felt that he really had shut himself off from, from me. And it wasn't a hurt, it was just something that was part of my life, and I accepted it, and I sent Christmas cards to him, and I didn't really have very much emotion about him either. And all of a sudden, because of this book, we're going to get to know each other, which I think is sort of fun. Interesting. And my boys are going to have a granddad. <laughs> Great. Well, he's got a question for you, B.D. Okay. Uh, one of the members of our audience does, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, you may have a reason to feel the way you feel towards your mother, but why uh, ruin her public image this late in her life? Okay, well, first of all, I don't know how you assume I feel towards my mother, but I love my mother very much. If I didn't love her, I would not have written this book, let alone published it, because this is an attempt to get through to her and present my side of our relationship to her in a way she cannot burn, throw away, or ignore. And I would not have written this book after her death. It would not have been to any purpose. But how old is your mother? Does, don't mother you think it really affects her? Of course well, it affects at her age, her. don't you think it really affects her and I mentally? I want her to be affected. I want her to hear what I'm saying. But as far as ruining her public image goes, she's, she's been an irascible, temperamental star all her life. That's okay, hear what image. she's saying, though. I, I, and I think that the, the point needs to be made uh, because she echoes the feelings of many people. What if, and we hope it doesn't happen, but what if Betty Davis's bad health is made worse or in fact this well, thing is the straw that breaks the camel's back and she Actually, she's in very she good health now. If she were still ill and frail, my situation with her would be totally different and I would not have continued but with this. But don't you think it's too late now to change your mother? I don't think she it's ever too late. I don't think it's ever too late. I've seen people oh, change do. at 90. No, I, th I think it. you become set in your ways and I think once you reach a certain age, you're not going to change well, anybody. Well, I don't agree with you. Well, why go public? Was there no other way? I couldn't find another way. I wrote her, I, I talked to her, we argued, we cajoled, and Mother just shuts out everything she doesn't want to hear. If you begin to say something that but she doesn't it, want to hear, she shuts it out. This, isn't it a little spiteful? I mean, I will admit, I've read this entire book, mm -hmm. and there are wonderful passages. I mean, and there are pictures and there of you are some and your mom at the first shows. And, and it seems like, it, as you pointed out originally with us, it's an adult problem. Yes. The more you got to be an adult and have your own opinions... No, it wasn't my own opinions. Uh, that wasn't what, what started the problem. The problem was I had a marriage that worked, and she couldn't handle it because she felt that she had to destroy my marriage in order to be sure of my love for her. And that's what she tried to do now for 21 years. Ha thankfully, very unsuccessfully. You suggest in the book that your mother also destroyed her sister's marriage for oh, the yes. same reason. Oh, yes, both her sister's marriages. Well, tell about Bobby, um, the one you're named for. Well, Aunt Bobby uh, was a year younger than mother and was totally dominated by mother and did not have very much inner strength. And mother did indeed uh, rule Bobby's life, and she had assumed that she was going to do the same thing with me. Marriage was fine as long as it fell apart, and I came back and acknowledged that she was the only person that I could ever fully depend upon. What does your husband think of his mother-in-law? 
Oh. Does he ha did he ever have huh. any sort of a movie star he has approach been, to her? No. Uh, my husband, much to mother's disgust, married me in spite of the fact that she was Betty Davis, not because of it. And that is the first thing that really upset her, because he was not impressed by her. And this drove her into absolute rage. How dare he not be impressed by her? I mean, this was unthinkable. And uh, so that, that didn't get them off to a very good start. And she just, as the years went by, I thought she'd get used to it. And the fact that I had a good marriage, and the fact that I was not going to sacrifice that marriage in order to be her companion. And she hasn't gotten used to it. She's continued to be angry. She, her frustration, her anger has deepened, and her resentment has deepened with each passing year, and eventually extended itself to my children, who she also regarded as a threat to my relationship with her. her mother believes that, that love and ownership are synonymous. She doesn't believe that love can be shared. Well, well, let's, we have a picture of your children because there, there were some circumstances, I guess, just within the last, what, four or five years that might have sparked you to... Well, there was, there was a, a To point. actually break off your relationship yes. between them and There was a point about two years ago where I made that decision. That's, that's Justin, who at that point was five, and Ashley, who at that point was 13. Now they're two years older now than Now they're us. seven and 15. Yes. Okay. What did she do to them? Well, she it was just a, was controlling toward them, too? It was progressive. Um, whenever she was in our home, she was very nasty to them. She was, she was unpleasant. She'd always been nasty and unpleasant to my husband. I mean, he wasn't entitled to breathe in his own home, as far as mother was concerned. Um, but the children became part of that in her mind. And but, she terrorized them when she was with us. But wasn't the older one in a movie with her? And didn't we yes. read nice things in uh, People magazine about how nice she was to the older son? When she oh, was... I mean, well, during the time of the movie? Yes. Um, oh, yes, because if, unless you say that she's the most wonderful person on earth, the world ends. So you either are for her or against her. And if you are for her, then you better say she's the greatest person that ever breathed, um, or she becomes enraged. Doesn't matter what you say if it isn't that. And this is the same subject that's been raised very recently with the People, not People magazine, but with um, 60 Minutes. And they re-showed an episode that I did with Mother. I saw that. Um, that I did five years ago, which was before the conflict with my children. They, m my little boy was a year and a half when that was filmed. It was before Ashley did the movie with her. And um, she wanted me to do that, and she said she wouldn't do 60 Minutes unless I did it with her. And of course, everybody called me, the lawyers, the managers, you have to do this because how can you deprive your mother of doing 60 Minutes? So I finally got fed up arguing and said, all right, I'll do it. And I told Mike Wallace before that show, I said, if you're coming out to do an interview with me, you're going to get cotton candy because that's all I will talk about. And if it appears that that's my entire relationship with mother, that's your problem because that is it. I will show you that little corner, which is good which was a wonderful childhood. When she was a working mother, she was a very conscientious working mother. Everything between us as one person, one mother with one daughter, except for Gary Merrill, which was a blind spot she had, except for that, my childhood with her was terrific. Sure, she was possessive. Sure, she was dominating. But it was okay. I could handle it. it the trouble between us didn't really begin until my marriage began to be obviously successful. And we should point out that uh, although BD is quite young, she's already been married almost 22 years. Yes. Another question from Wally. Okay. You mentioned People Magazine. Let me just clarify a point. Uh, People Magazine, in their story on, on your book and on you, mm -hmm. said that you're a born-again Christian. Yes. A and that is a relatively recent occurrence in your life, That right? happened about a year and a half ago. Okay. There are some people, a a and I, I don't feel that I'm qualified to judge your relationship with the Almighty, but there are some people who have a tough time with reconciling a born-again Christian belief mm -hmm. and what they clearly see to be a violation of a the conflict. commandment that says, honor, honor thy, thy father and mother. Yes, well, I was never permitted to honor my father for openers. I'm, I'm beginning to be able to do that now, and I'm very glad about it. But there's also a commandment from the Lord that says that once you are married, you cleave unto your spouse. Right. And anyone who tries to tear that asunder should be put aside. And at that point, your commitment to the Lord is to honor your mother or your father's soul, to pray for their soul, to love them. And I do love her, but that does not mean that God wants, and if anybody reads the Bible thoroughly, they will discover this, because I went into this thoroughly for myself. Sure. Does not mean that that honor has to be allowed to destroy your marriage. Be marriage is sacred to God, too. Realistically, be realistic with us. How possible do you think a reconciliation is with your mother before I she dies? fully believe in miracles I've been part of miracles I've experienced miracles I've seen miracles and I think anything is possible 
What was her relationship with her mother, and how much did that influence oh, the way she is with you? It was the same fantasy uh, from her side of the, the coin as her relationship with my family, where she will go on a talk show and say, it's beautiful, it's idyllic, it's perfect, it's wonderful. They fought like cats and dogs. You saw this. She, she lived there, didn't she? Constantly. No, she didn't live in our house, but we saw her all the time. They didn't have a peaceful moment together. Ruthie was very much like mother, and they fought all the time. And everybody hated to be around when they were together because it was just vicious. Did she create this, um, this need? Uh, how can I put it? Did she, did she just do an identical situation that you're now living, that she made her daughter... Um, I don't feed her everything. I don't. I don't think it was that particularly. I just th think that she expected me always to be there, always to be her companion. She said when I was a child, particularly after her divorce um, or during her divorce from Gary when I was about twelve, that uh, I was the one thing that nobody could take away from her. I was the one thing that would be constant in her life. All the failed relationships, all the rotten marriages, didn't matter because she owned me. And at the time, I thought that was kind of odd, but I figured it made her happy, and that was okay. And it never occurred to me at the time that that would not be the case because she did have me always, but she didn't want to share me. I wasn't allowed to, to have any other relationships and that's something I didn't realize when she was saying that. The rules according to Betty Davis yes. as interpreted by her daughter B.D. Hyman and in her book My Mother's Keeper. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's been fascinating hearing your stories. It's been very and, lovely. And you stay with us as AM Philadelphia continues on a Tuesday after Memorial Day. Thank you.